In this video we're going to be talking about how to create hair for games. So you can see here in this example I've built out a short hair style. Um, the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about hair is basically building a cap and card system. So you can see that this hair cap here is really just something that is very close to what I had for the head here. And I'll just go ahead and take uh, the hair and move that over real quick for this hairstyle like this so you can see the head's just completely bald and we'll just go ahead and take this geometry that we have here and you can see how I kind of split this off like this let me hide the cards real quick and if I just hit 5 just to show the shaded mode you can see that this was just this portion of the head and kind of a little bit of geometry down here for some of the sideburns and the geometry kind of travels back on the back of the head here and what that does is it allows us to get a shape that we can start to paint alpha into some of this area and we can have some interesting shapes fall across the head here and in the sideburns and in the back of the head here like that so I'll tap six to uh, show textures and I'll put this back into the location where we had it before so it's going to reset this back to zero and then show the hair cards like this I'll hit seven so we can take a look with uh, some lighting so the first part is all about this this uh, cap and uh, we'll go over how we can actually build a texture for this I'm actually using uh, paint effects inside of Maya to generate that and then uh, this is just purely a color map this one has been broken up into there's four different colors that you can choose to uh, change the hair type so I was trying to get something very similar to the original texture that I made but this is all dynamic so we can change colors on it and then this version here you can see I've made a red uh, variant and maybe like a bluish purple variant just to show we can do different colors for that um, I want to hop on over to another scene that I have that we can take a look at this one here and on this one you can see here's another example of a cap that goes on top of the head and this one the shape has been really kind of tweaked out quite a bit so this is the original head that we have here and like I said you could have some texture already painted on that particular area uh, and then you could do something different with the uh, with the cap itself. Uh, the advantage of this is that we can have a shader for just the skin for the character and then another shader that's just for the hair cap and the card so you could have a really nice specular fall off that maybe is anisotropic or something like that for this. You can see if I select this thing here and we take a look at the image it's on dim image right now so you can see the UVs here's the UVs for this uh, hair piece that we have here and then this was the texture that was generated and you can see how it kind of falls along here so it knocks out all this area with alpha and you can see if we zoom in kind of close here it kind of looks like it just kind of floats above here and that allows us just to have that more complex breakup of shape that we have for the hair going along um, this area where the hair cap meets uh, the head and you don't see any kind of intersection. I do try to have everything match up pretty close to vert for vert. I could go through and just re-snap all of these uh, verts along to the head but I'm not too super worried about it. Again this example is just to show you that there's uh, quite a bit of difference between uh, the hair cap that we have here and shape wise and uh, from what we have from the head now this example we still need hair cards to kind of uh, get the, everything kind of rounded out so I'm gonna hop back on over to Maya and to this area and you can see this is one of the caps that I showed you from the first um, section but I'm actually using Maya paint effects to make the hair at least for the start of the texture that we see here so I'm gonna go ahead and hide the paint effect stuff that you see here and basically this was done by just taking this cap and um, I'll go ahead and 
make this uh, paintable by paint effects. So we're just going to go under rendering and then we're going to go to paint effects and then you say make paintable. And then you can see under this paint effects tab, you could paint with any of these different brushes that you have here. But I like to open up the uh, visor and there's a bunch of different hair types within the visor. If you go here to hair, um, if you want to get to the visor, that's windows, uh, general editors, and then go to the visor and open that up. It did take me a little while to open that on my computer and not exactly sure why that is. But once this is loaded up, you've got different hair types that you can choose from. So I was using this hair brown dot mel. So I'll just click on it and you can see in my, uh, um, I have a Wacom tablet, so I'm able to kind of draw on this thing and get pressure sensitivity. If I want to make my brush larger, I can just hold down B and then click and drag my cursor left or right and that will increase the uh, size of the brush there. So you want to find something that's about the right size that you're looking for when you lay these strokes down. That's pretty large there so I'm going to decrease the size of this and then try to find something I'm happy with. I want it a little bit larger than that. So I think that's pretty good. And then I need to start thinking about the way that the hair would be laid out and kind of flow on the head. So if I was doing this uh, parted to the side hairstyle, I want to kind of grow it out and thinking about that hairline that we might have. That's pretty straight there. So I'd like to get a little bit more curvature to it. And you can see you can lay this stuff down pretty quickly. So the goal is to get something to cover the head and have it look pretty good, but I want to stay away from the edges completely uh, because I am going to be baking this down to a map. So if I do that, I might have to start decreasing my brush size a bit. So here's um, basically one half of the head. Let me hit undo real quick. Just draw that over again. And so now I need to start kind of growing things out this way with my strokes like this and decrease my brush size a bit like this now let's continue to lay this down so that's basically the process that I use to get all the different paint effects strokes that I need. So I'm just going to select these and get rid of them real quick and show this and get rid of this cap. And I'll turn back on this layer that I've got of pre-painted paint effects. These are actually the converted. I'm going to show you that real quick. So I've got a front and a back. I took all the strokes that I had and I divided them into a front and back section. So let me show these real quick. So this is everything that I kind of uh, painted out with the with the paint effects. And the reason I grouped it together in a front and back, you can see this is pretty darn heavy and it's uh, kind of uh, pretty taxing on the computer. Um, but it had mainly to do with whenever I converted these uh, paint effects into actual polygons because I wanted to convert this into something that I could bake down to this uh, cap that we have here and steal all the shading information from. So I basically had all these uh, paint effects strokes in the front so I'll just select those and then we can convert those over to polys pretty easily. We're gonna go under modify and then go to convert and then you can do uh, paint effects to polys and then open up the option box. You can see here after you've created uh, the conversion, you can tell it to hide the paint effect strokes. Um, and you're going to have to test out how many polys you need for the poly limit. And that's basically saying for this front area, uh, only create 680,000, which I say only is quite a bit. But um, I did find that this number was pretty good. If your number is too low, then it might not create all the uh, hairs that you see here. So I'm going to hit convert. And you can see here's what it actually converted to the polys for me. So here's all the different uh, pieces that we've got and these different strands that actually got created. Um, 
turn green. We'll fix that in just a second. Not a big deal. Um, and you can see the front, these strokes, it actually hid them for us, just like it we'd expect it to. So I'm going to take the back and we'll do the conversion for that. So I'll select all those pieces. And then we'll go under Modify, Convert, Paint Effects to Polygons. And let that run. Let's take a second. And it goes through pretty quickly and uh, generates this stuff. So it looks like that's done now. So I can just uh, hide these pieces here. Um, so it turned green and didn't, it lost uh, its shader information. So I can just go ahead and select all these here. And then if I go to Window, Rendering Editors, Hyper Shade, we can take a look at the uh, materials. Now the bad thing is it's going to create um, a material for each one of those things that it converted over. I only really need to assign it to one, so I'll just right click over this and say uh, assign material to selection. And if we've done everything right, let's deselect this. You can see um, now that shader is assigned to all the different hair pieces that we've got. So I don't need all these, so I can just drag a marquee around the ones that I don't need. I'm just going to hit backspace to get rid of some of them like this and you can create your own shader if you don't want to keep this color information you could take that uh, that shader and you could you could tweak it if you want it's up to you what you want to do with it um, but I could uh, take all these pieces and we're going to just group them like this and then I'm going to go to uh, polygons and I'm going to go to um, mesh, sorry, and go to combine. I'll just combine all these together into one object. So it just might make things a little bit easier for me to deal with. And I should have paid a little bit more attention and just um, last time I grouped this into a front and a back group. Okay, now that it's combined everything, I'm just going to go ahead and delete the history on this. So I'm going to go up to edit and then we'll do delete by type and do history and just delete the history on that. Okay. And it runs a little bit faster now. Like I said, I probably been smarter if I would have uh, divided this in the front and back like I did earlier. So I'm just going to select this and I'm going to assign this blend material that I have just to show you that we could get a different look on this thing just by uh, changing the material. And again, the goal is to get this thing uh, baked down onto this cap that we have. So here's our cap. We can select that. And then we obviously have our hair. Now, the other thing that I did, I want to bake in some of this lighting information that I set up. So I set up some point lights. Uh, select that and hit Control A so you can see uh, what I was working with on here. So the intensity is pretty low on these uh, lower lights down here and then I have a spotlight that's just facing straight down and it actually uh, casts shadows just using depth map shadows and that's the resolution of the shadow there. And here's the prenumbial angle and the cone angle so we can get nice soft kind of fall off. But basically I'm just trying to get a little bit more light to pull on the top of this and then also with the shadows that you can see here it's going to give nice separation between those different pieces and so then when we bake out uh, the shading information that'll actually get picked up so the way that we bake this stuff down to this thing is within the rendering menu in Maya you're gonna go to lighting and shading and then you are going to, to transfer maps and open this up and then this is Maya's area that's kinda like X normal where we can bake off normal maps and we can bake displacement maps, diffuse, which is just color, uh, shaded, which is what we want, which is color with lighting information, alpha, so we can actually uh, bake out a map that shows like where these little pieces kind of end here and give us a nice alpha map that we need. And then you can also bake out ambient occlusion. So depending on what you want to bake out, I was baking out a normal map, the lit and shaded, the alpha, and an ambient pass uh, that you can use. 
So when you click on one of these, you see it opens up this tab and you want to choose a file format. I was always using Targas to bake things out. You can see for the normal map, we'll do tangent space uh, normals. Then you give it a location for where you want the maps to save. And then this use my common settings is telling it what are going to pull from this area here. So uh, currently it's set to 512 by 512. I would suggest doing at least some tests before you go large on your sizes on here but after you know things are working you can put this up to like 2048 by 2048 and we want to transfer in world space which just means this is the target surface here and we want to recognize that that hair piece that we're going to bake down is actually in the same exact location in the world um, then we also have fill texture seams which is just on our UV border if you take a look at your UV texture window um, this is going to bake out pixels, uh, four, pix uh, four pixels past the UV border, and uh, that helps to make sure that there's no seams on things. I don't think it's a huge deal on this, but we could always bump that from four to you know 16 or something like that. Obviously, the larger your map is, the larger your fill texture seam is that you want. Um, so those are the, some of the different settings to set up the bake. We also need to tell it what's our target mesh, which is your game res mesh, which would go here. So you just select that mesh and click Add Selected. And then what's your source mesh, the high res thing, which is our hair. So we'll go ahead and select that and then say to add to source mes meshes. Um, if I go back to this cap here and we take a look at the search envelope, we can display either just the mesh which we see now or the envelope and you can push this thing out and get an idea of how far out this thing needs to go to bake so you can see that if my envelope doesn't encase all the hair then it might not bake that so we could put that maybe on about 9 or 12 uh, could go even higher so this is something that you do have to play around with I've had cases where I've had to do multiple bakes at different search envelopes. Um, so you can see the envelope or you can see both which is going to show you this uh, your base mesh and the envelope and then after you're done kind of setting that up you can just put that back down to mesh. There are some uh, advanced options at the very bottom where you can tell it to uh, cast out the rays from this surface to go and find the closest to the envelope or you can say inside the envelope which would push in which you can see there's a few hairs in here that are in here um, and then go outside the envelope or you could tell it to go inside the envelope only I think I leave this to the uh, closest envelope so again after we have these options set up and we tell it to bake um, we're basically taking all that shading information and we're baking it down to this UV layout that we have here for the for the head um, so I could talk about the just this UV layout real quick it, it's pretty simple um, normally whenever you have a head like this and we'll take a look at the UVs for this um, you might have the uh, face kind of split up like something like this where you've got this big seam going down the center of the head and it runs down the back like that so that works pretty good for like a human character because you want to make sure everything looks really nice and uh, you know this area of the face and things like that um, and it's probably easier to hide the seam down here but this causes a problem whenever we're working with hair because with hair uh, a seam running down the center of this hair cap would not be ideal at all so that's why we can take that shape dupe it off and then just have the hair cap and then do something like a projection from the top so if we go to create UVs and do planar map option box and then project from the y-axis we've got a planar projection that just pushes straight down and then Maya's got some really nice tools for doing auto uh, relaxing and laying out so I just took this whole thing and clicked this button in my 2015 so you could select that or you could right click select your UVs on here and the other tool that I like to use is this unfold tool so we can click that and you can just uh, click and drag the unfold to uh, relax all these and you could have it uh, happen by world space 
And so it basically looks at the size of the polys, this this poly next to this one and next to this one, and tries to lay it out uh, based off of the ratios that it sees in the world. So that's how we get our cap kind of set up and we get it baking. And if we hop over to Photoshop, we can take a look at some of the different uh, maps that were generated from this. Okay, here we are inside of Photoshop. And you can see on this map, this is pretty close to what got baked out. I just have the wireframe so we can see that over the top of everything. So let's tap F and then zoom in a bit like this. And I've done some cleanup on this. Um, basically, if I hide uh, some of this information, let me show you pretty much what exactly did bake out. And I'll hide all this. And so the bake from Maya um, gave me something like this. And I'll hide the wireframe as well. So it looks uh, pretty cool. The only thing is, um, if I turn on the wireframe, you can see I was missing a whole lot of information going down maybe by the sideburns, and then it needs to really kind of hug pretty close to the ear, and then maybe come a little bit flatter on this shape going down the back of the neck. So I'll turn that off. And so basically I hand painted some more strokes in here like this. And so I did a darker color, I like to use solid colors, so I just made a new solid color like this. And the solid color gives you a color that you can choose, so you can just double click on it. And you can see I could change the color at any point after I've made these strokes like that and make it some kind of crazy color. I'll just hit undo for that. So I had a darker color, and then over the top of that, I laid down some lighter strokes as well. So I want to show you real quick how I made that brush for this. So I'm actually painting into this mask with the solid color, and that's what gives the solid color its shape by painting into that mask. So you can see here is a 256 by 256. So if I hit Control N, or actually, let's see if yeah, that's right. Control N. We could do a 256 by 256 map. It'll just be white like this. I can just tap B for my brush. I've got some brush presets where I've just got a really hard edge brush so it looks something like that and I'm just painting some different size dots like this okay and then after I have those dots created I'll select all control A and then control C to copy and then I can go up to edit and define brush preset and I'll just hit OK for that. You can give it a name if you want. Um, I'm going to also go in and go to the window and go to brush and then go under my brush tip shape. Select that and take my spacing down really far. So you can see now we've got these nice strokes. We'll go to shape dynamics so we can make it smaller with pin pressure. And then I'm going to choose my minimum diameter somewhere around here. And then I can do transfer, which is um, opacity with pin pressure, and then flow with pin pressure. And I'm going to take the uh, minimum for this stuff and drag it up about 70 for that, and about 70, not the flow jitter, sorry, about 70 on this one as well. And then after I have that created, we can save off that brush if you want. But you can see if I paint into this mask with the solid color, what we got going on. So if I paint straight, you know, I can get some straight kind of lines going on for some hair. Uh, depending on the size of your brush, it's going to change the look of this thing. Or we can do some kind of wavy kind of lines. So here's this color here. Um, and then I've got the lighter color over the top of it and I'll paint into that mask. You can see how this is selected and highlighted like this. So I know that I'm painting into the mask. And so that's how I built up some of these different strokes. The only other thing that I kind of have going on on here is each one of these, if I right click on it and say blend options, we can take a look and I've got a drop shadow turned on this. I've got the angle set to negative 90 and then a distance here so it basically gives a little bit of dark shading under these and makes the strokes feel a little bit more 3d 
So that's how that was rounded out. Um, I also have a cavity uh, baked out for this. So if you remember the amine occlusion pass, we can bake that out. Um, I also know that if I baked out a normal map, the normal map that was baked out on this thing, I have X normal installed on my machine. And so there's a really cool filter on uh, with X normal where we could select all, copy, hit control N, paste it in a new document. My computer's just trying to catch up here. So I'll hit OK, hit Control V to paste that in there. And then if you have X normal loaded on your machine, you'll see under the filter types you get new X normal filters. And then I can do normal to cavity right here. So let's do that one. And it'll load up this uh, plug-in thing here. I usually don't hit anything other than continue, and it'll just go ahead and turn the normals into a black and white map that you can see. And you might want to play with the levels a little bit. I'm going to hit Control L to bring up the levels on this. I'll hit it again. There we go. And we can drag the white point this way to make it the white super white, and then drag this darkest point to the right a little bit to get those dark point points to show up a little bit better. And we could drag the mid-tone as well if you wanted. So that's basically how you get that cavity map. So I'm just holding down V with the move tool and holding down shift and dragging it over onto this document to get it to line up perfectly. I'll hide the normal map put this back on color. And so this cavity is just set to multiply over that. So it just adds a little bit of punch to some of the lines on there and darkens it a little bit. And then I've got a hue saturation adjustment layer that I made right in through here. And then that basically, if I double click on that right here, you can see it's just desaturating the color a little. Not too much, but just enough because this was really saturated when I brought the map back on over to uh, Maya. And then we've got levels, which just kind of punches things up just a little bit. And you can see here I've kind of drugged the uh, really darks to the right a little bit just to punch the shadows up a little bit. And then I think I've drugged this over to the left a little. The other thing is adding uh, some noise to things. So it might be a little bit tough to see on here. Let me go ahead and zoom in. But there is noise on this image. I can crank this up to 100%. You can see it, it's quite um, noisy at that point. So I'll put it back to 20. Basically how that map was made, um, I'll just make a new document real quick just so I can show you. If you fill this thing with 50% uh, gray like this, and I'm going to hit Alt Backspace to fill with this foreground color, we'll go to Filter and we'll go to Noise and say Add Noise and we'll maybe make this a little bit noisy you can do Gaussian, do monochromatic, hit OK for that okay so here's how we generate the noise and then I would again uh, we could do this in the same document over here if you do it in a different document you can put on the move tool and then drag it over and hold down shift and it'll constrain that to snap right into place for you um, and then this blending mode is set to overlay. So anything that's just mid-tone gray, there's no change with an overlay. But if anything pushes towards white, it shades a little bit lighter. If it pushes anything darker, it shades a little bit darker. So that's how you can build up this kind of noise pattern. And it doesn't really change anything about your image other than like adding the noise. So I had some fine noise. And then I just duplicated this. Just click and drag this down to the new icon. And it made a new one. And so we've got this other noise that's a larger scale. And so basically, after I had this copied, we just hit Control T, and that'll uh, give you a mode to transform your layer that you have. And if we just click this little icon here, this will lock the width and the height together, and you can just put it on something like 200 or something like that, and hit Enter when you're done. I'm going to hit Escape just because I'm not going to actually scale that thing up. And then the cool thing is if you push these noise levels too high, 
you can always take the opacity and drag that thing down. So I think I had that at like 10% like that. So that's basically how I got um, the, uh, the color information for the hair. Um, and then we definitely need to make sure that we're building out alpha for this thing. So that was the beginning of the alpha that I set up and I had to capture these new strokes that I made. You can see in the uh, channels here, I made a new channel and for whatever reason for Maya, for its system for drawing, it wanted the white areas to knock out transparency and this part was black. So you can see here, you should be able to see just through the hair cap a little bit in this area and then you can see through it a little bit here. And then it's really knocking all this other area out. So I actually uh, combined all my my color information with I think the alpha and then I took my normal map that we had and I think I combined that with the spec map so basically I took the color and bumped up the levels and desaturated everything which it's pretty easy to desaturate you can make a new uh, hue saturation adjustment layer if you want and drag the saturation all the way over that's one way of doing it or if you have a flattened map you can go up to image adjustment and say desaturate and that'll get rid of all the color information so that's uh, one one way of uh, doing it you can do it uh, like that if you wanted um, but I think I was actually doing something with uh, these different layers now so I just added that together and that gave me my final spec Okay, so I could show you the uh, maps. I think I just took the spec and then put it in the alpha with the normal map. So to save a 32-bit image, that's pretty easy. You just uh, you do file, save as, and then you want to save your, I'm saving it as a target file. Choose that as my file format, and you can tell it to include alpha channels. Um, so let me just save this as a temp thing. Hit save. And it, when you hit save, it should bring up a little dialog. Do you want to save as 32 bits? That's where you can add that extra alpha channel. If you don't need the alpha channel, you want to save as 24 bit. So hit OK for that. And let me load up and show you what was created for this. So we've got this with the normal. I'll open those two. And so here's the normal map. And then if we go to channels, you can see I packed in the spec with that. There's that map. And here's color. And then I packed in the alpha with that. Okay. Um, so that, let's go hop on over to Maya again. That basically gave me this when I loaded up the. Uh, textures on here. So I'll hit control A and just show you the shader. I was using for hair using this type um, anisotropic. All right. So if we go to rendering editors and go to the hyper shade and you want to create a new material for yourself, you could be using a blend or something like that. You see the blend here or you could use this anisotropic and that's what I use for this one. So if we take a look at the textures, I imported in the texture maps and I gave myself uh, different versions of this color map. So I just imported it in and copied this multiple times and I'm calling one is alpha because I've got the alpha channel in one. Uh, just using one if I was going to drive some ambient and I'll talk about that in a second. And then uh, color. So that's just the color information that we've got here. So let me go to this material again. And so these guys, if I middle mouse drag this down here to the work area, click it, and then graph that, you can see everything that's kind of feeding in. If you put your cursor over this, you can see what's piping into what on this. So let me try to dock that over. Nope, that's not going to work. Okay. Push this down a little bit. Um, so the color is obviously just going into the color slot here like that 
and then this one that I'm considering alpha feeds into transparency so that might or might not come in automatically for you if it doesn't automatically come in for you you can middle mouse drag this texture over the top of your shader hold down shift and it'll open up the connection editor and then at that point I'm saying the out alpha of my texture is going to go into the transparency red green and blue just click this this and this and that'll set up the transparency for you and then you want to take your normal map and you want to drag it into the bump map area once it does that it'll create a bump 2d node that you want to make sure is set to tangent space normals that'll set up your normal map for you and then um, the thing that I was saying for ambient um, I don't think I actually use that I think I just piped that in the shader itself let me double click that and go back yeah I was just taking this ambient color and increasing that a bit and I think that was uh, kind of making it a little bit easier to uh, to see some of the the shading on this um, so that's basically how that was set up let me explain to you real quick how I made some of these cards that you see here these extra pieces that are going to give it some more of its volume so I'll hide these real quick hit, select them hit control H so now I've got this cap and I want to steal some of the shading information along through here so Maya's got this cool thing where you can just click this little icon here it'll make that surface live and whatever you do uh, whatever you create will actually stick to this new mesh that you got here so I'm gonna go to the modeling toolkit double click that or just click on that sorry and go to the quad draw where I can start laying down points so I'll just click a point here 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 and here and then hold down shift as I go over the top of that and that'll make a quad for me so I'll hold down point point and now hold down shift and then click there and that will make a new quad for me if I just click and drag this point and I snap it over the top of that I can turn that quad into a try so I'm just doing that and I'm gonna lay down point 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 and one more point here like that and I'll do some more points along here and if you want to move the points you can just hover over the top of it and click so this is 2015 these controls keep changing a bit from the different versions uh, but this seems to be pretty easy now so I can hold down shift and then click and that just makes new polys for me so nice and simple so I'll make some polys here for that that and then tweak the shape just a little bit by just clicking and dragging on the points and I'm going to drag this out far enough to where it captures the alpha from this thing here okay getting closer to being done here let's add a point like that okay so here's a quad right there like that and I could drag it out and leave it like that if I wanted to turn it into uh, tries you could just drag this point over the top and snap it if you wanted I think I'll just leave it just like it is here okay so here's my shape I'll hit F8 to go into object mode or you can right click on it and say object mode uh, I want to be in polygon menu set I'm going to say normals soften edge okay so I got my shape here and basically I want to assign that shader that I've got to it so I'm going to right click and say assign existing material because I know I've already got a shader set up for it that we are working on so that assigns it but doesn't mean the UVs are going to be good for it so if I put on W for the move tool because I created something the uh, manipulators down here at the origin I could go to um, modify center pivot and it will just put the pivot of my manipulator at the center of this thing and if I want to move that pivot point you can hold down D and it uh, kind of temporarily turns it into something where you can kind of move that pivot point around if you hold down V it t temporarily turns on snap so you can hold down V and then add D to it and you can snap that 
to like this point here. And then now I've got my pivot point set for it. So I'll just lift up. So you can see, obviously, this is not what we want. We've got our hair card mapped to each one of these faces. So let's fix that real quick. Let's select the cap that we have here. And let me take it off this make live. So we got our cap. And then we want to select our card that we just made, which is going to be down here. And hold on control and select it. So I've got these two selections. And I'm going to show you the UV texture editor window. And you can see the UVs are all messed up on this thing. And we're going to use a tool to transfer the UVs from this cap to this card. So we're under polygons. We're going to go to uh, mesh and then transfer attributes. Go to the option box, load that up. And we want to push and transfer UV sets. We'll do the current one. And we're going to transfer this in world space. That just basically means this card is sitting over the top of this shell in the world. So let's hit apply. And you can see it's relayed out that new card and it just laid it out based off of what we see here. Now, if we delete the history on this, so we can go to edit, delete by type, history, and the hotkey for that is Alt Shift D. We'll do, delete the history on that. That's important. Now if we raise this thing up, you can see we've got a new piece of geo to start working with and it's got all that shading information from our shader on there so we can start building this thing out. So the other thing is we don't want this thing to produce this nasty shadow that we have here. I wish Maya had the ability to recognize alpha and produce a shadow based off of alpha but it just doesn't work that way. It does in Unreal Engine uh, 4 and the old Unreal Engine. So I really like that functionality. I wish it was here in Maya. It just isn't. So to turn off shadows for this, we can hit Control A, bring up the attribute editor for this, and I'm going to go to the shape node for this and go to the render stats. We can open that up. And you can see we got cast shadows and receive shadows. We can receive shadows. That's okay, I guess. Um, but if you see some weird kind of shape showing up for that, you might want to turn off receive shadows. I do know that turning on screen space ambient occlusion uh, when it comes on it produces this effect which is just not not uh, not cool for us so I'll turn that off and you can see it just kind of you could see where the card was at on there so that's basically the process that I use to make these different cards that you see here and just took this shape and duplicated it, started manipulating it. Nice little handy tip. If you put it on the uh, uh, vertex hitting F9 and you tap B, you can get a soft fall off on that. You can hold down B and click and drag the brush to make it larger or smaller. And then you can kind of uh, pull that shape out a little bit. And yeah, so I'm not sure why it's taking so long to move that thing. I'll delete history on it. But uh, that's basically how I tweaked out these different shapes that you see here for this and then built up something similar on the side. If we just tap 5 to view the shading on this, you can see like you should get a lot of your shape just with the model itself. And then when you add the, uh, the shading to it, that's when it starts to really come together. So I wanted to set up something that would allow us to do dynamic color changes. And so you can see here, this one's actually a dynamic color change uh, within inside of the editor. And I try to match, you know, somewhat close to the original thing. And then this one's a red and then like up this bluish kind of thing here. So if I select this and hit control A, bring up the um, shader for it, I'll just hit select. So we've got the shader selected and you can still see what's going on with this. If we open up color, you can see I've used a layered texture. So Maya lets you layer multiple textures and it's basically this is the bottom of the stack going towards the top. So if you thought about multiple layers of paper sitting on top of each other, this piece of paper is at the very bottom and it keeps going to the top. And basically I'm feeding a black and white map into this alpha area and that's coming from my uh, Photoshop. I'll show you that map. Um, and let's take a look here real quick. Window rendering editors, hypershade. Let's take a look at where you get that 
layer texture. So it's other textures, you just want to create that and you can drag it in and it basically gives you this node that you can start working with. You can just click anywhere on here and you can add new layers. Hit the little X to get rid of them. You can see whenever you're actually on one of these, if you click it, there's different blending modes, kind of similar to Photoshop. Um, and you can change colors on here. So if you want to change the color of a, a layer, it's kind of like solid colors inside of Photoshop that I really love. So this is kind of a familiar setup for me. So basically in Photoshop, I had to set up this map that looks really kind of funky um, by itself. And it's basically I took all the color information from here. Turn on color. If we select all, and I'm going to hit Control Shift C to copy everything, make a new document, Control N, hit Enter, Control V to paste that in there. And then I need uh, three different versions of this because I need a um, base color, midtone colors, and then highlight color. And I'm going to use something inside of Photoshop that will go and help us to separate some of that stuff out. So if we go to image and adjustments and then we go to threshold, it gives you this slider that if I drag it over you can see it starts to reveal more or less of that image. So I can push this all the way over and that will be like my base color thing, right? And then this is the midtone one. So I'll do that again. So go to image, adjustments, threshold, drag that to about here something like that and then do the highlights so do that again and here's just my highlights hit OK and so now I've got black and white images that I can uh, plug in for R G and B of this map so we've got this map just make a new one 2040, 2048 go to channels if I look at the red channel there's my highlight midtone and the base color and then I have an alpha that I added to this one too that is just going to be used as a multiply so if you know in Photoshop multiply anywhere where it's dark it darkens and if it's like pure white it doesn't add any kind of darkening effect to it so this multiply goes over the top of everything that I'm doing color wise and just kind of punches out the shape just a little bit more so here's our setup I just made a flat color that's the base of uh, the color pattern that we're starting on this thing. So if I click on that, you can see if I made it lighter, you can see this is giving this kind of overall kind of color. So that one's going to be fairly dark. And then the next one up is going to be uh, that base color that we made, which is this thing right here. Okay. Um, so inside of Maya, you can see this alpha section. I had to bring that map in, and after this was set up, this becomes a little tricky to set this alpha up. So we're going to go to the hyper shade, and I need to graph this one that we're taking a look at and we can see that this map here if we feed it into the uh, the layered texture like this remember if we hold on shift and middle mouse drag this it'll bring up the connection editor so I can choose from that map remember I kicked out um, out color I got a red green and blue channel this equals the highlight color this is the midtone this is the base and the alpha is that multiply thing and so if I want to connect any of these to the inputs that I'm making for the layered uh, texture that you see here this is what it equals out to uh, this is always going to be this is the top of the stack and it reads down towards the bottom so that makes sense but imagine you're taking this and you flip it on its side that's what we got going on here so this is input one three four five six and the number of stuff can get really confusing and out of whack just remember that whatever you see this order it's replicated here but they're just in a different orientation this one's uh, vertical this one's horizontal and if you open this thing up this is where you can pipe that um, 
any one of these channels, the alpha, the red, green, or blue. You can pipe it into the color, or you, the thing that we're worried about is alpha. So you just click either one, whatever you want to connect it to. You just click this alpha, and it becomes connected at that point. So you can see I had to go through and do that for each one of these guys to get it set up. But once it's set up, it's uh, pretty smooth sailing from there. So you can see here, here's that base color. If I change that to bluish color or whatever, let's do something that's just not so hideous. So I'll do slight grayish blue, and then I'll change this one's the mid, the mid value. So do something like this, and then here's our highlights. We won't go so white with that. And then this is the multiply that gets uh, put over the top of that. So this actually should be set to multiply like this. It's taking a while to think. It didn't really look much different just because I have the blend mode before was set to over and I had an alpha uh, channel on it. So it was really doing what I needed it to do anyways, which is basically give a darkening effect over the top of everything else. But it is possible to change even that color on it. So that's how a color variation was made. Um, so basically, I could duplicate the entire uh, shading uh, network with its connections. So if we go to rendering editors and go to hypershade, after one of these was set up, you can select it and go to edit and go to duplicate. And you can say uh, with connections to network, and it'll keep all your map connections. The only thing I needed at that point was to make a new version of the layered texture uh, that we were taking a look at. And let's see here. So here's a layered texture thing. If I wanted to uh, make a duplicate of that with the connection, so I can go edit and say duplicate with connections to network, I do that. And then on my new shader, I just pipe that in this new layered texture into uh, color. And then at that point, I have a new, um, a new shader that I can play around with and start changing colors. And so that's how we can start to build up a little library of variation. The last thing I think for this scene that I want to tell you about is that if you have one hair set up, and I've got my average character here, you can select all the pieces that make up that hairstyle and then select your body last. So hold down shift and select that. And go to the animation menu and go to create deformers and then do a wrap deformer. I'm wrapping that hair to the body. And then I've got some blend shapes set up on here to where it's actually changing the body. So the most obvious one is if I push this thing to the obese character that I have, you can see that that hair type now uh, follows the shape of that head and so I can blend that thing all the way out and if I wanted to duplicate all these I would have a new duplicate so I just select them all and hit control D I'll hit shift P to unparent things and so now I've got a thing here let me just group them I'm hit control G and that'll group them and I can put it on the channel box and I will drag that off to the side so now I can blend this guy back down to his uh, average self but then now I new, now have a new hair type that is for my heavy or obese type of character okay so that's how you can set up even blend shapes or, or whatnot pretty easily from uh, kind of setup for this uh, you might have to hand tweak some of this after it does it doesn't always work perfectly but that same method works for like shirts and pants and things like that. But that's how you can build one hair type and feed it into maybe a system that you got for a bunch of different characters. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you is a character that I worked on during my time at EA. So this is a character from SSX. Uh, his name is Eddie. And he had this crazy kind of afro going on. So it's kind of that same thing that I was talking to you about where I've got all these different cards and I've got a cap on him so I hit control H trying to hide these guys it's just not working 
not sure. Maybe we've got too many versions of Maya open. But you can see the shape that I've got for the top of the hair, and then this is a shape that I've got for the bottom of the hair, and these cards actually go over the top of it. So these cards are kind of crazy. I made a flat card and then per you know just cut around these things and built out a shape for it. So I can actually show you what that shape really looks like. So I'm going to hop on over to another version of Maya and have that load up. And so this is what I actually modeled out some kind of actual thickness for this thing. Now I just showed you how to do well, not showed you how to do it, but I showed you what a wrap deformer is all about. So I built this f uh, this simple plane, and I wrap deform this to the plane. So I select this, selected this card, and then we went under animation, create deformers, and then do a wrap deformer. And I just think I just used some of the default options for that. After that's set up, I can take my wrap deformer and I'm going to hold down control shift right click and turn off symmetry so now I just got that so the cool thing with the wrap deformer after this is set up I can take these points and I can deform it it's kind of like a lattice deformer but you get to actually model out exactly what uh, that shape is all about so I've got this little setup to where you can see I've got a control shape which is actually um, parent constraining this whole translation group so if I do the translation group it moves all everything around uh, I'm getting some kind of weird thing with the wrap deformer but no biggie so I'll move that thing around with this and then I've got these different uh, deformer types on this card that we have here and if we go to create deformers nonlinear when we do bend I'm doing these bend deformers and I'm actually on the control sphere taking that and adding uh, custom attributes so I think it's under doo -doo -doo -doo, modify add attributes right so we go here and you can add a new attribute so I did these curvature um, these different curvature things on here for this and you basically give it a name if it's going to be a float and what's the default value and the minimum and the maximum values that this thing can go up to so I set those custom attributes and I tied them uh, I think with a set driven key so where is set driven key right here if we go to set you can see if I load this as my driver and what's going to be driven is the actual bend, the curvature for this. So if I go load is driven, and I might have to actually do select this curvature and do bend in on this. Let's see. Inputs this bend three. There we go. So I got to select this over here and then do load driven and now I can do um, curvature and I could say with the curvature for that custom attribute I could key that at one state and then when I actually change the curvature on one of these guys to like one or something like that then I can set another key for it. It won't let me do it because I already have it hooked up. But once that's done then I can do a curvature that bends this thing in like this and I've got a curvature that bends it this way or that way and then a curvature that does a fanning effect this way and this way and I made it into its own scene and so then whenever I was working on this scene over here I could just import in that my binary file and it would give me that whole entire setup to where I could just take um, that control shape and then push it up to the shape on the hair and then I could use these curvatures to kind of manipulate that thing and did all that to get all these different cards to kind of wrap around that bigger kind of shape that I had. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to show you is some stuff that I did inside of ZBrush for the sculpt on this. So I wasn't really sure how I was going to do, accomplish the hair, so the first thing I did was just sculpt it out of shape 
or the rough shape of what that hair is going to be all about and that was used to make those bigger shapes that you saw inside of Maya. I'm going to load up another scene where you can see the cards where I actually sculpted out some of the uh, detail for the cards to give to bake out a normal map. So I'm going to hit my comma key and I've got a uh, previous quick save version on that. I'll just double click it to load it up and we'll load that in and you can see basically after I took that shape that I modeled in uh, Maya that I showed you earlier for the tool for building the hair cards I took a version of that and brought that into uh, ZBrush and then just sculpted on it so let me hit this real quick so you can see with a different shader after it was sculpted like this and give a little bit of dimensionality to it you can put it on this normal RGB shader and then I'll turn off perspective like this and you can hit shift R to do a best possible render and that will render out and you can turn off shadows if you want under render uh, let's see render properties we want to turn off shadows if we're doing this and then I'll hit shift R again and then we can just export that thing out we can go to document and then go to export and save out a Photoshop file to get an image format out and then we can map that to our cards and that gives us some normal information that we can use so I'm not actually gonna spit that thing out I will go to Photoshop though and we could go back out here and let me load this thing up real quick and I can show you some of the textures for this okay I'm gonna go here my source images and hair cards let me get rid of these real quick I accidentally made a copy of that an earlier thing so we got diffuse normal and specular so I'll load these up for the hair cards And so basically, here's the normal that was kind of kicked out. I know that looks uh, quite a bit different. I'm not sure if I normalized that or something. I might have actually even baked that out inside of Maya at that time. But there's different ways about going about it. But uh, you know, you'll end up getting your normal map. This is just what I painted for color, and this is specularity. So if you think about a tube. It should be uh, darker along the edges as it goes away from the camera and then it gets a little bit lighter as it travels uh, towards the center. And so after all that work was done, then this is kind of something like the uh, final effect that we've got going on here. So that's a pretty quick rundown. I know there's a lot of different information that I threw out at you, um, but there's even more to uh, making you know hair this is just some best practices some ways that you can kind of go about uh, doing things uh, you could use ZBrush is actually I've seen people uh, generating uh, hair inside of ZBrush and kind of converting the uh, fiber mesh stuff to polys or maybe curves and then getting that stuff inside of Maya so there's a lot of really cool techniques out there. This is just uh, some different techniques that I've learned over the years that I thought I would share with you guys. So hopefully this uh, helps you out in your endeavor to create some hair.